Hey there lovely folks. Get ready to jazz up your web designs, because today on Kogri, I'll show you how to whip up this awesome card reveal animation using just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're taking inspiration from the cool website called Verse, showcased on Godly. Guess what? We will be diving into the green sock timeline to effortlessly toggle those animations. No time to waste. Let's dive in and make your websites pop. Alright, let's start building the HTML structure. First, create a container to hold everything. Inside that, we'll add a nav. Next, we'll add a nav item. Inside the nav item, we're going to place a div to hold our nav icon. We'll make use of the ion icon for this purpose. Moving forward, let's also create another div with the class nav icon name. This is where we'll add the text label for our icon. Now, we'll replicate this nav item structure twice more. Each time, we'll swap out the icons and names to match your desired design. Next up, let's define a wrapper for our cards. Inside this cards, we'll insert a close button using the ion icon. Then, let's populate the cards section with individual card elements, each having its own distinct name. Lastly, we'll conclude this section by adding a footer text within the same container. That's it for the HTML setup. Now, let's move on and dive into CSS. Starting off with our HTML and body, we're making them span the entire viewport with 100 viewport width and height. We're also keeping it neat with hidden overflow. And for that added touch of style, we're using the Acid Grotesque font. Let's dive into styling our container. We're setting its width and height to 100%, ensuring it spans the entire available space. Speaking of style, we're using CSS variables to handle the background and text color. And for that centered and symmetrical look, we're using Flexbox. Our content will be perfectly aligned both horizontally and vertically. We forgot to do some groundwork for all elements on the page. We're zeroing out margins and paddings to ensure a clean canvas. And to keep our sizing consistent, we're setting the box sizing property to border box. Time to tackle our nav. We're making it a flex container, giving it a neat gap of 25 pixels between items. And to let your cursor know it's clickable, we're assigning it the pointer. For the nav item, we're positioning it relatively, and its content will flow in a column layout. For that extra breathing room, we're spacing out its components with a 10-pixel gap. Now, let's focus on the nav icon within our navigation items. We're going for a centered look, aligning both horizontally and vertically. Each icon has a fixed width and height of 50 pixels, and we're giving it a two-tone background with a gradient effect going from a slightly darker to a lighter shade. A subtle border adds a touch of sophistication, and rounding it all off, we've set a gentle border radius of 10 pixels. The icon itself is white, blending seamlessly with the background. Moving on to nav icon name, we're styling the text component. It's positioned slightly elevated from the top to maintain harmony. We're fine-tuning the font size, weight, and letter spacing for legibility. It starts off a tad discreet with an opacity of zero, but fear not, a quick transition within 0.3 seconds makes it gracefully visible when needed. Now, for some delightful interactivity. When hovering over a nav item, we're giving the nav icon name a gentle lift, bringing it to the forefront. Simultaneously, its opacity smoothly transitions from hidden to fully visible. Behold the drawer element adding a touch of finesse. This pseudo element acts as a tiny ornament, positioned absolutely at the top right corner of the first icon. With dimensions of 10 pixels by 10 pixels, it forms a small, crisp circle in elegant white. A border radius of 100% ensures a perfect, smooth circle. Turning our attention to the cards, it's all about precision placement. Positioned absolutely at the top left corner, it takes up the entire viewport. We're employing Flexbox's magic for centered content, both horizontally and vertically. For now, we will set pointer events to none. Diving into individual card elements, they hold their own charm. Positioned relatively, they have a specific width of 200 pixels and height of 300 pixels. A gentle border radius of 10 pixels gives them a pleasant curved look. A soft background envelops each card, while a box shadow with just the right touch of blur and opacity provides depth. Inside, the magic of Flexbox centers content both horizontally and vertically. Typography enthusiasts will appreciate the thought put into font size, weight, and letter spacing. Now, let's add a dash of dynamism to our cards. Each card has its own unique transformation. 
Imagine giving each card a little nudge and spin. And now, for some finishing touches. Let's start with the close icon. Positioned absolutely, it's snugly placed at the top, just 5% from the top edge. We're centering it horizontally with transformation. A circular element with a width and height of 50 pixels. It will have a white background and have a 100% border radius. We will again center the icon inside it with that classic pointer cursor. And finally, the footer is our last piece of the puzzle. Also positioned absolutely, it rests at the bottom, 5% from the bottom edge. With a color of light gray, a font weight of 500, and just the right spacing between letters, it's that subtle yet informative touch that wraps up the whole experience with finesse. Time to add a touch of interactivity with some JavaScript. We're kicking things off with the DOM content loaded event, ensuring everything's ready before we roll. We're grabbing our drawer, close, and cards elements for later use. We're setting up a timeline using the GSAP library. It's set to start paused and reversed. When it starts, we're allowing pointer events for the cards container. When it reverses, we're disabling pointer events. Next, we're defining how the animation unfolds. The card gracefully slide in from below. They stagger for a smoother entrance. The close button zooms in a bit after a short delay. The footer elegantly appears by fading in. When the drawer is clicked, we're checking if the animation is reversed. If it is, we play it. If not, we reverse it. Clicking the close button simply reverses the animation. It seems we missed a step. Don't forget to include the GSAP CDN before the script tag. With that added, you can now see the magic in action. I hope you had a blast following along. Remember, if you're looking to dig into the nitty gritty, check out the link in the description for the source code. The Pro membership offers an exclusive gateway to not only the source code but also monthly complete website template. That's a whole package of goodness. Anyway, I hope you had a great time with this tutorial. Looking forward to catching you in the next video.